Hello everybody, my name is VG Pat and we are here today to do a tutorial for Dwarf Fortress. This episode is going to be concerning the military aspect of Dwarf Fortress. We're going to be getting on how to equip your soldiers, what to equip them, well not what to equip them with, uh, not that's not what I mean, but how to equip them, where to train them, how to uh, use them effectively, and if you want, how to kill them. That sounds stupid, I know it sounds stupid. But hey, I mean, sometimes you just want to drop a few dwarves down a hole and maybe slingshot them into a wall and watch them blow. But what I mean, if that's if you want. I mean, I'm not saying that's something I would do. I'm saying I'm doing it for your benefit. So we're going to get into that. And I, I was, I, it took me a while to figure out how I was going to do this. And the best way I can think of showing this off is to use a fort that I have already made. Ignore that. Ignore the fire. Don't even worry about it. Ignore the dead animals. Ignore the fucking lava. Ignore everything. I'm here here just for this. This is one of my biggest, most successful fortresses. And I got my hens over there. got my animals. got my water. And in this main area right here, I have a fairly wide open area where I train many, many military dwarves at the same time. And I'll show you how to set up something like this and how to set up a military from scratch. So, what you do in this sort of scenario is the first thing you need to do. The first thing you need to do is you need you need to get some armor stands and weapon racks. Which, you know, you're going to build armor stands and then weapon racks. And just set them up where you want your military to train. They will train around these. They will store their equipment there. And so the majority, that is where they will spend the majority of their time when you set them to train. Meaning that you might want to put food around there, you might want to put it in a place that looks nice, put up statues, make the area look good. Don't do what I did and put it in the middle of it. No the fuck where. Try to put it in a decent spot. I put it here because it's right in front of my, right in front of the gate, which is completely covered in blood, mind you. That was, it was silver at one point. So we know lots of fighting has happened there, and also fire, don't worry about that. Anyway, so you need armor stands and weapon racks. That is what you need to do, that is what you need to start with. And after that, you go to M for military. Now I have many different squads set up, many different, and they all get their own names based on whatever the f whatever it is, it's just random. It's kind of how when you set up a fort, if you don't make a name for it, it comes up with its own name. But we're going to disband all these. And when you first start out, when you first create a squad, you're going to make one with a military commander. And you're going to select metal. metal. It should have leather armor, metal armor, no uniform, or archer. It's going to have stuff like that. I added metal too. It's my own stuff. But you can, you, you can, you can modify this to your preference. So instead of actually creating a squad by moving over milita militia commander or captain hitting C, we're going to go to N for uniforms and under each of these, and this is a very complicated, this is a very complicated area and I wish there was a program like Dwarf Therapist to make this easier. Now you can, I mean, and, and it falls in the same area with Dwarf Therapist, you can change the jobs in game but it's just as difficult as this. So with each of these you scroll up and down you see leather armor and this selects under items that'll be the first things that they run into will be the first things they'll pick up and the things that they'll keep above other things so under leather armor leather armor headwear legwear etc etc leather shields and bucklers and individual choice melee all these will be the things that your dwarves if you select leather armor will go for when they want to equip themselves for metal armor individual choice weapon now notice it says individual choice weapon under metal armor by default and not melee yeah and under archer leather armor for everything but individual choice range for me for metal too I have it set up the same way as metal armor but instead of individual choice melee I have it set to individual choice weapon so they'll just pick up whatever they want kinda of their own deal but Steel. I, I don't care what they equip when I put it on metal too. So what you would do in this case is you'd move over and then you pretty much just delete everything and then you'd hit up at the top you see capital A L H G B S W M C and then R, lowercase R, and you'd go to each one of these, like you'd hit 
you'd hit Shift A, and now you can go over one more and select what you want them to equip as armor, as the upper armor. Dwarves can dwarves can wear a multitude of things. They have a left glove, a right glove, left left boot, right boot, etc., etc. So you can set them up to wear a specific set of stuff, a specific uniform. And you can go through each of these and okay, I want them to all wear. Uh, let's just say a male shirt and a breastplate. All right. Now let's go to legs. I also want them to wear leggings. Excuse me, leggings and or greaves. Now, if it's if it's multiple things that would occupy the same same slot. They'll just go for one or the other. Usually the first one they find, they'll stick with. They won't try to mix and match it. They might not have one legging. They might not have one greave. It just depends. And then for helmet, I want them to have a, a helmet and a cap. You know, you, they can put the cap on and put a helmet over it. There we go. And for gloves, gauntlets, boots, uh, high boots and low boots. They can wear whatever they want. And shield shield or buckler that's what I prefer now the more stuff you put on here it's not gonna look as clean as the default stuff obviously but but it's what you're gonna do to be honest not a lot and you can hit M and set things to be whatever material you want I prefer metal for all of these things but that's just me that is just me. But for helmet, well, when I go to helmeted caps, I usually put the cap as leather, and the helmet as metal. Just, I, I'm weird sometimes. So, you can set each material to be the exact one you want. You can have it like, oh, I only want him to wear a bismuth bronze helmet, or I only want him to have a toad leather helmet. I have toad leather and worm leather apparently. Could have fooled fucking me. Anyway, so the next item we're gonna add is a weapon. You can go through many different things here. You can have an individual choice weapon, which would they just would pick up the first thing that they're either good with or they have a preference for, and they'd run with it. That would be what they'd go for. And then individual choice melee, same as the above, but it cuts out all ranged weapon. And individual choice ranged, which is just the opposite of the last one. And then you can go with whatever you want. If you want, if there, are, if if you want, if you want, you can set up your own specific uniform for training and then have one to be just for training people for spears and swords etc etc now this is also very good like and I'm getting ahead of myself when I say this this is also good to set up if you're setting up a certain law enforcement who would go around using whatever weapon they have handy to deal out punishment now if they use the same weapon say a silver sword or a silver maze to dull out punishment it could be bad and the punishment they could be dealing is to, could be to someone important now you could use this to set up a uniform specifically for them that includes a training weapon like a wooden hammer so that when they go to beat people the most they're gonna leave is a bruise and some nasty thoughts now you can also select whips pigs bows bow guns pikes halberds etc etc but these are all as you can see foreign weapons and what foreign means is they're not native to your dwarven lands like whips and whips and whips particularly are what you get from goblins blowguns and pikes I'm pretty sure are what you get from the underground civilizations and halibirds I'm, I'm pretty sure that's human I could be wrong but I don't know I know there's a lot of weird things that you can get from the other races like scourges goblins flails not a fucking clue I don't know where they're all from but foreign you can set them to use these weapons but they won't be very good at them and to be honest you're better off with some of the basic stuff anyway now when you're also setting up your military you also have to think about when you're setting these up when you're setting up a uniform for each individual one is if if you do is what kind of weapons you're going to use and this this can be an issue as well depending on what you want because you have to set up different weapons like maces and not maces but hammers and swords and etc etc but you also have to understand the certain pros and cons like a, like a warhammer a warhammer is very good at breaking bones but let's say you run into something very large with a very sturdy outer skin and maybe is also made out of some sort of metal a hammer isn't gonna do much obviously that's not what you're going to want to use against them but if you're going against something squishy you can fucking crush the goddamn skulls with a hammer 
Same goes likewise, if you got a sword, it's not gonna do very well against enemies with chainmail. You slash and you slash, but it's just gonna kinda run off of them. Now if you're getting something made out of metal that we're bringing up again and your sword is a better metal, you can slice through it and then there you go, you win. So you have to think about that kind of thing. Now I will also say, as a, as a personal thing, I definitely prefer if you make your maces and warhammers out of either silver or platinum if you can find it. The reason being is silver and platinum are both very, very heavy metals. And they make good, I mean, a heavy metal is good for a mace or a hammer, obviously, because you got bigger, heavier weapon, hit, hit harder on impact, more damage. Now, if you make it out of a light metal, it's not going to do much. They'll be able to swing it faster, they'll be able to tag more, but those uh, hits that they're getting in won't do quite as much damage as if it was made out of silver or platinum. Now, the same goes with a sword. Now, you might not want a metal that is very heavy. You might specifically want for a sword or a battle axe a light metal, but with one that can have a fine point, which is steel. Steel in this game can carry a point, a fine point very well, amongst other things that I'm not going to spoil, which I, I mean, it's already in my Let's Play, but I mean, I don't want to spoil it here for people watching the tutorial, but still. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, but that's how you are going to define what you want as far as weapons. Now, we're going back to the military screen, and we're going to go to Militia Commander. We're going to create a squad, and we're just going to go, just for standard, Metal Armor. Now, the first one you come up with is going to be your military commander. For me, I already have one chosen. It's Ashtla. He's an expert hammer dwarf. I have him as mine. So, and when you create it, you have to move left and right to go to each individual one. It'll be a brighter blue when you select it in whatever one you are in. Remember that. Now, when you're in one, your best if you put more than one of the same dwarf in multiple squads. It'll be, he'll be removed from the previous one. Obviously, you can't be a part of multiple ones. You have to remember. You have to remember that. But it also does a good job of. Let's say, let's put him in here. <laughs> Oopsies! I accidentally. Uh, let's disband that. Create squad. Metal armor. Okay. Now remember, it also will put the person that you're selecting in this other one. Like if we, as the one you're over highlighting. That's what I messed up with. So let's go back and hit create another squad. Metal armor. And if we go and try and put the same person, it says he's already in the squad, the Slick Shields, which is the first one we made. So it does give you some sort of indication. We can try to put him in there, but if we go back, he's out of the previous one. And remember, also, as you're going through this to figure out people you're going to put in each squad, it will give you relevant skills, like Onu Dalantr Ridblibla. He is an adequate axe dwarf. So we'll put him in there. And Ushir Oslanust is a competent axe dwarf. Again, I have a lot of those apparently. We'll put him in there too. Now you can keep legendary spear dwarf, put him in there. Skilled axe dwarf, him in there. Axe dwarf, swords dwarf, adequate hammer dwarf, etc, etc, so on and so forth. Now then, the next thing you're going to have to realize is when you first create a squad, if you see in the bottom corner there, right under their names, you're going to see F for ammunition and S for schedule. We'll get into ammunition later when we make an archery squad, but for now, we need to talk about schedules. When you come up with a schedule, see right here, Granite, Slate, Failsight, all those are the months. And then the squads, the Slick Shields, and the Avalanches of whatever, I don't even know. They are set to train by default every month. So, they'll train around the and they'll train around the weapons rack and armor stands. That's not bad, right? They'll be training. That's good. No, it's very bad. Because the more they train, the more negative thoughts they get. And if they get too many negative thoughts, like, Man, I hate this training. This training sucks. And it wears on month after month. They're going to go crazy. Now, if you take a dwarf who's been training for months and months, and they're suddenly batshit fuck doo doo crazy, you're gonna have some issues because A, he's gonna be hard to take down, B, you spent all that time training him for nothing, and C, he's batshit fuck crazy. So, what you're going to want to do is you're gonna to want to go down into each of these, and you're gonna cancel orders. No scheduled orders, and we're going to do that 
I, and I, this is a personal preference. I have them off two months and then they train two months. Off two months, train two months. Now you can put this to whatever you will. I have so many squads that I can set it up to be anything I want and it won't matter because I'll always have at least 30, 40 dwarves at a time training. So we're also going to set these to not train, but I always want people training at a certain amount of time. At, at a time. So every month, every month, at least one squad is training, which is good, that's what we need. Now you can edit orders, you can edit the orders, and you can give orders, but I'm not quite sure how these work, and these are very complicated. Now you can set them, now I know how, I mean, I know how it works, but it's more complicated than anything you will need, I guarantee you. Now you can set them to defend burrows, but I'll show you an easier way to do and use that, to defend an area that you don't need to go through all this complicated tomfoolery. So we'll just close out of that. The best thing to do is just have them to train, you know, scheduled orders, train, blah, blah, blah. Now the next question is, how do we get them to train? Well, that's easy too. So you see, you see here, zoom in a bit, I have these Dolomite weapon rack here and Dolomite armor stand here. I have several here, but we're just going to focus on those two for now. So we hit Q, and we're going to go over this one here. We assign it as a room. No, we don't assign it as a room. Sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, blah, whatever. It is a free room. You can hit. You can assign a room, free room, whatever. And down at the bottom, you see the slick shields and the avalanche, avalanches of rinsing. Those are our two squads. And you can hit. You can hit the plus and minus key to go up and down them. And when you're over one, you hit T, and they'll train. P for position is, you can set what position they train in, I've never had a, I've never had an issue with what position they train in, so that's your, that's your preference on that, I'm just showing the basics here, and what you can, and more than likely should do, so you can set position, be like, yeah, this person goes uh, here, and then that there, but that's not the point, by default, they will also put their equipment here, which is very useful, much easier for them lugging it around all the time because nine times out of ten they'll throw parts of it down if they don't need it for their job or it gets in the way. Blah blah blah. Anyway, I usually only set one group to train in each one because it can get very cluttered. But again, that's a personal preference. Think of it as a design philosophy. So there you go. You've got your military dwarves training. You've got everybody doing what they should be doing. Now, I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to undo the changes I made, get all my squads back in order, which I disbanded so I could show you how to get them in. And I'll show you one or two more things before we get off. All right, we're back. We got all my military back in place. We got all of my people back. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to command your military around. Now I said before that when you're setting up positions in the military that's kind of redundant, not something you need, and it's a bit overbearing all in all. So what you're going to want to do to counteract this is you're going to hit S for squads, and as you can see I have all my squads here, they all have 10 people, 10 people is the max. You can also see I have a fair bit of orders that I can give out from this screen. Attack, cancel orders, I can make them move to an area, I can set them as active, I can set them from I can set them to train from this menu. So let's say I select A A Shift B Shift C Shift D Shift D Shift E Shift F and we'll take Shift G. That's uh, 70 70 dwarves. So I think that's enough for demonstration purposes. So we're going to hit M for move, and we're going to have them all move out here. And we'll hit resume so that the time will come back and see everybody's becoming a dwarf. Hold on escape announcements. Uh, he's too injured. He's in the hospital. Don't ask. They've all becoming their their certain jobs. They're all their certain jobs. As we can see, they're all coming out here to move. Now it's going to take a bit, but you can see they're all moving towards the position that I set up. See, A B C D E F G. That's going to take them a little bit of time, but they'll all gather around, they'll all get together. And something to note that when you are selecting this option, military dwarves, military dwarves in particular, are highly violent when they are in this sort of scenario. Whenever you have them training or training, moving, or by all means attacking something, they will become incredibly violent and they will attack anything hostile near them. 
remember that and it could be detrimental so if you say make them move a place and by some random chance they see something that pisses them off either the thing that pissed them off is gonna die or they're gonna die or they're gonna get into a stalemate or something's gonna happen so we got all of my doors moving out here for demonstration good they did good so we're gonna just hit O for cancel orders there we go they all decided well we're done now we're going we're going back to what we're going to do so simple easy good now the next thing we can also do is we can also hit K for attack now in this menu you can just hit enter to kill creature at cursor or you can select from a list or make them kill everything in a large rectangle but let's hit L from list and we have all sorts of stuff we can do we have some ghosts can't kill ghosts there's a couple pond grabbers and cave crocodiles deep underground and some crudgels which are kind, kind of like pussy ogres and some troglodytes nothing we want to kill right now but at least we know that they're there at least the dwarves know that they're there so that they can go kill them should they want you can also select from a rectangle, which is very similar to how a lot of the other ones work. You just highlight over an area. There's a bunch of horses they can kill. Huh. What are the... Where are the horses? I don't know. I don't know if I feel right killing these horses. I don't know. Where are the horses? My horses? What? Hold on. Okay, no, they're not my horses. Oh, the horses are over here. Okay, well, we're not going to do that. We're going to go deep underground. Hold on. Deep, 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 deep underground. Small pause there. Had to set something up real quick. And what I was going for, if I can pause this, is if you see that flashing, flashing green S right here, this is Utej de la blue, 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 blue. Now, deep down in the caverns, which is something you'll, you'll reach after you dig deep enough, special monsters spawn called Forgotten Beast. This one is, is a... A great sauropod with little eyes. It has a knobby trunk and it undulates rhythmically. Beware its dust. And I just spent a little time, I paused, I figured this would be a good demonstration of how to fight. And this is... A Forgotten Beast. It is very powerful, it's very strong, and we're going to be fighting it. So we're going to have... it's. It's trying to get to our base. It is trying to get into our fort. And I've set all I've set these this these few squads to defend this area. Remember, I said that they are violent. They are going to try and attack it as soon as it gets here. But th yes, and there it goes. They had released the big thing of dust. It hurt my troops. But they're still going at it. They're still chasing it. They're still going at him. They're trying to get him. As many of them as they can are trying to attack him. They're grouping up. They can attack from all, all eight squares around them. Three above, three below, and on both sides. They can attack diagonally. And they're grouping up around them, and they're beating his ass. They're cutting him up. They're doing all that. And there they go. They killed him. Nothing too complicated. I had them move into an area, and they defended it. That's exactly what we wanted. I had to move there to protect our fort as he was coming in. And my squad, on its own, defended that area. Now, I am going to select A, B, C, D, E, and I am going to cancel their orders because they are still stationed and now they're going to move on. Now, what's going to happen is also because what they killed, there's blood everywhere and there are those going to be casualties. There's no casualties that I see, but that doesn't mean anybody's not hurt, etc, etc. So, that's pretty much your basic on how to fight. It's really not too hard, and I could have just as easily had said, squad. A, B, C, D, and E to attack a certain thing, and they would have done it with just as much, just as much, uh, oomph, just as much hood spot. They would have done it the exact same way, except they would have gotten it instead of it coming to them. But I wanted them to defend that area, and that's what they did. We could also get them to come kill this Turok the night too. Might as well do that while we're here, just to show it off. See, just selected a rectangle, moved over it, and now they're gonna go do it. Might also want to go to. Where is it? Son of a bitch. Gotta go down again. Also, there's gonna be my asthma release from the Forgotten Beast, because Forgotten Beasts suck. Forgotten Beasts are nasty. They're nasty. So that my, my, my asthma is gonna go up, it's gonna get released. There's nothing you should really worry about. And Forgotten Beasts, also when you kill them, have a fair bit of food, and my Dwarf Force has crashed. Oh well. Anyway, you kinda got the... You kinda got the uh, the meaning of it. The military really isn't that hard. 
bossing them around isn't really going to be an issue. So, there we go. That's it. Minimize this. Yes, dwarf therapist. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you really have to do with the military. Get it set up. Get the, okay, where they're going to have be set up. Also, if you set the um, the weapons rack and armor racks inside a room that has beds, they will sleep in those beds as if they were the barracks, which you can use just as well. And if you don't have those set up, they'll either sleep on the ground or they'll go back to their own beds. Should you have that set up? It's very simple, very easy to do. Now, mind you, you're not going to have as many dwarves as I did as, as what I just showed. That was just a demonstration. You'll build up from the beginning, and you'll have maybe one or two dwarves to command around, and it won't be too hard. But as you get more, it gets progressively harder, and then when you get to a certain number, it becomes easy because you have everything you need. Now, I did not show how to set up archery targets, which I'm going to do right now. Now. There's one thing about archery that is very hard to, it's very hard to grasp for some people, and it's actually one of the more complicated things that you have to worry about, and that is how to train your archery dwarves. Now, this is usually fairly simple, but it can also be very complicated in just getting it set up and wrapping your mind around. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to B for buildings, and you're going to go to the very bottom, and you're going to make an archery target. You're just gonna, I'm just going to put it right here, away from everybody else, I'm going to make it out of uh, bucket silver. We'll make another one. And I'm going to put four beside each other. Very simple. Not too hard. I just need to get one of my people to come over here and build it, and I'll pause until we get to that point. One second. Alright, so the last of the archery targets are getting put up. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. I forgot how much shit I had to go through to get this done. But that's kind of what happens when you have a big fort. And I decided not to make it out of silver because I realized I actually, uh, don't have quite enough close silver and it's heavy so what you're going to want to do when you get here is you're going to Q over it hit R you're gonna make these an archery target you're gonna select it you're gonna have it moused over all of them I'll have it like like that and there you go you set it up a lot similar way to the um, armor stands and weapon racks and you just go down to each one you got yeah no <sighs> fuck hold on there we go Hit T, they can train, they can train, they can train, everybody can train, everybody trains. You're also going to have to set up what direction they're going to be shooting from. If you hit W, they'll be shooting from the top to the bottom, which is what we want. A, S, D, they all work, but we're going to go with W from top to bottom. That's pretty much it. And the, archery, the ones with archery will come up here, they'll start shooting at it, mind you. And the arrows they use will be broken. But, if you remember as I said earlier... If you can go to squad, not squad, but uh, military, you can go to F for ammunition, and you can set up, for each group, a certain allotment of ammunition to carry. And for this ca in this case, you'd have, let's say your, um, your carpenter set up a bunch of practice wooden bolts. Wood being very easy to get, and also wood generating lots of bolts when you use it. You can make tons and tons of practice bolts, or because you're going to use bolts. You don't have bows, you use crossbows. In case I accidentally said bows at one point, no, you don't. You use crossbows. So you can have lots of bolts, and you can set up ammunition specifically for them, and it works in the same way as in all the other, like, uniforms and supplies, which I'm about to tell you about. The bolts will be used up when they hit the target. They'll be broken. Now, there's ways around that. There's glitches. There's little tricks you can use. But I'm not using those, and I'm just explaining to you how based on the game. They'll be used up. So, as long as they're training, you can have a training squad where they'll all be given an allotment of bolts so they can train on the archery targets so they, that nothing of value is lost. Don't allot them steel bolts because then you've fucking lost the steel, and, and then that's just stupid. Now, you can also set up supplies. Now, this usually implies that you have given them... Um, a, a backpack or a water skin so that they can carry around so they can carry drinks and they can carry food stuff like that now you can just make certain allotments on this like carry water don't carry water carry any water stuff like that carry one food carry two food don't carry food these are very minor something that unless you have your dwarves like unless you have giant towers built outside that you have them go rest in or do whatever in then this really isn't ever going to become an issue now it may this is something that it could come up as a personal issue but 
It's never been an issue for me. Now there's A for alert. This is something that is highly complicated. And I'm really not sure on how to work it properly myself. And the worst part is it's changed a little bit in the newest um, update. So what little knowledge I did have on this before, I do not anymore. But what you can use with this is that whenever you see an alert like, uh, the Forgotten Beast. If the Forgotten Beast comes up, the alert would be, Military Dwarves, blank, blank, any blank, go down there and attack it. You can set up things to be automatically done. Now this is a personal issue. Like, this can be something you personally set up. It's not really necessary. I've never had an issue where, if you know, if, if they had done it on their own. Not really a big issue. You just have to hit the space bar. Tell them to all go do their stuff. As soon as you see the message, because usually when something important happens like that, if you somebody's coming to war with you, or Forgotten Beast shows up, it's a big fancy message every time. So you never really have any issues with that. That's the alerts. Already kind of went over positions, which is you know creating each squad, equipment, uniform, supplies, how to use your military, how to train your military. Remember, if you put beds in a room, they will use those beds as if it was a barracks. Stuff like that. So let's get every single squad up here to train. And hold on, I think we can only yeah we can only do it for each individual one. You select it, and you hit T for train. There you go. That also bypasses the schedule that you come up for them as well. So if you want them to all train and it's not their time to train, this will completely go by it and they'll do it on their own. So I hope that answers all your questions about the military. If I've skipped anything, if I've messed up on anything, leave a comment below and I'll leave an answer. I'll even leave annotations that if I mess something up, which I did in one of the previous tutorials, I said workshops make noise that can wake up other dwarves. Apparently, that is not 100% true. It is based in fact, but as I've been told and as somebody related me to the wiki, it also comes up with the problem that the game updated shortly after I made that, that it does not work quite in that way anymore, so there's that. I will add annotations to correct any mistakes I've made. I might even make another video explaining more things if I missed anything in particular. I would show off fighting Alpha Siege, but those are random. And I do not know. I know the last one I had gotten was very frequent, so I do not know when the next one's going to be. Now, mind you, that I am at war with several people like goblins, elves. Yeah, the elves and the goblins are at peace. Remember, remember, war sucks. If you're not prepared for it, war really sucks. Especially when the goblins start losing, start losing their patience. Then it gets into a whole other... It's awful. It's awful. Anyway, I hope that answered all your questions, and I'll see you guys next time. Remember, if you have any suggestions for what kind of videos on Jewel Fortress you would like me to make, besides adventure mode, I know I need to get back on the adventure mode thing. I've not really been in the mood to play Dwarf Fortress lately, it's something I have to really be in the mood for, and i am not been in that lately, but if there's anything specific you want me to make, anything on a certain thing in game, anything I might have missed, anything you might need any more information on, remember, leave it in the comments or send me a message. I'm always open to suggestions, that's what the aquifer video and that's what the military video have been. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, see you guys next day, I'll see you guys whenever you watch a video. Have fun everybody.